students i welcome you all to analyst is once again i am ekta sharma and today we are going to discuss pm gati shakti program now here we have two words in the scheme in the name of the scheme and these two words are quite to a very large extent they are telling about the meaning of this program gati means speed and shakti means power now we all know that gati shakti was launched for the enhancement of infrastructure in the country now think about a situation say 100 years back when the infrastructural development was not such and the economy was thus for all for, for the whole of the globe pure world ke liye you can imagine how backwards the economy was and economy moved only because of infrastructural development because infrastructure it provides connectivity it provides it provides ease of uh, connectivity it provides you know proper transportation and thus the economy grows for example when there was no amazon when there was no ebay when there was no flipkart how you used to uh, get hold of various products जब ये सब चीज़ें नहीं थी तो वे हाउ यू यूज टू बाई यू यूज टू गो टू द मार्केट एंड परचेज थिंग्स राइट बट विद डेवलपमेंट हाउ दीज एमेजॉन फ्लिपकार्ट एंड ऑल दीज रिटेल वेबसाइट्स हाउ हैव दे डेवलप्ड सो मच लेटली इट्स ऑल बिकॉज ऑफ द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नॉट जस्ट इन आर कंट्री बट ऑल अराउंड द वर्ल्ड नाउ आई रिमेंबर इन नाइनटीन नाइनटीज it was as child as a child we were very happy whenever we used to get uh, imported chocolates or you know those pepsis or cokes in in tin cans so at that point of time it was something very different for us because us time pe india mein only bottles were available for pepsi and coke tin cans were not available so whenever we used to get uh, whenever our relatives used to come from say usa they used to bring all these things the chocolates like hershey's so they used to bring all these things for us and it was something like it was a huge thing for us it was a big deal but in today's time basic imported things are just like any other thing in the market right i think i will give equal weightage to a puck chocolate or a kit kat chocolate as i will you know uh, give to hershey's or uh, maybe any other imported chocolate so because currently the availability of these things these imported things is so much that we do not give them that kind of uh, you know added uh, priority uh, as we used to give earlier when these things were not easily available in our market aaj ke time pe to every i think every possible shop has all the imported chocolates confectioneries chips so on and so forth so this is the magic of development in infrastructure right this is the magic of development in connectivity around the globe and thus this infrastructure in itself is of so much importance to the boost to economy and that is exactly what we are going to talk about today in our discussion on pm gati shakti moving on why have we why are we talking about pm gati shakti because uh, last year our prime minister he launched this program gati shakti uh, on the independence day and he did focus a lot on the improvement or the need to improve in, in the infrastructure of the country currently we all know that infrastructure development in our country is lagging behind in fact if we talk about our relations with various other countries who have uh, either who have funded our uh, infrastructural projects or who have you know uh, been a partner in the development of infrastructure in the country these countries there is in fact in mutual relations between our country and some other country you will always find this one deterrent one uh, factor that irritates the relation and that is the delays in infrastructural projects India today is facing multiple delays in infrastructural development India is facing multiple problems and challenges in infrastructural development that we are going to discuss in the lecture 
and you will see how currently the infrastructural development is at the back stage to give boost to this infrastructure development our prime minister has introduced this scheme and see gradually when you get to know about the features of this scheme you will realize how important this scheme can be in the long run for the development of the country because it tries to remove all the obstacles that our current infrastructure projects they deal with in fact uh, recently our economic survey also a few years back the economic survey also talked about the problems with infrastructure the you know the blockages the bottlenecks that are away, that are there uh, in the infrastructure development so and how they are impacting the overall economy so this schemes in the in such a backdrop backdrop it plays a very essential role for the development for the overall development of the country it gives boost to the economy of the country now you might see you might have seen the example of united states japan south korea china how the mere infrastructural developments have uh, led to a boost in economy you can go through the uh, the history of these countries and you can see how the development in infrastructure in these economies was so helpful that it led to a a, a lot of boost to, to it gave a boost to the economy it uh, you know it provided uh, that kind of uh, jettison to the uh, to, to the development of the economy or growth of economy that was required at that point of time now why do we say that all these things all this infrastructural projects are so essential for us think about it if an economy within itself is trying to grow like trying to be very self sustainable there might still be this is a very basic economic problem there might still be some resources there might still be some uh, things that there are not locally available and they would need to import them from some other country or if you are talking about the state then from some other state not everything can be available locally right so if there is good infrastructure this country or the state has good infrastructure or infrastructural support then those things can be imported at a cheaper rate but if they do not have those things uh, or a good infrastructure or good connectivity then these very things the import of these very things will become very costly for them right so that is why infrastructure is given so much attention in development of economy you might have read about this in the uh, the theoretical part of your economy in fact uh, given the fact that such scheme related to infrastructure is in the news lately you must read about infrastructure and its economic linkages you must go through the, that chapter of infrastructure in economy because as far as upsc is concerned something that is so prominently in news will be definitely ours so you need to have a very rock solid foundation on this chapter so let's talk about the context we have already talked quite a lot about the context but just let's go through this the prime minister has a state governments as well as private sector to adopt the gati shakti portal to plan infrastructure projects and develop special economic zones so the the government has launched a gati shakti portal under which all the infrastructure related activities will be uh, uh, they will be there available there for all the other ministries or all the other states to look into there will be a lot of connectivity between which currently see ministries they do not have that kind of connectivity between or that kind of communication between themselves right and that is why sometimes overlapping projects are made sometimes some projects which are essential they cannot be made because some ministry thinks that this is the arena of other ministry to look after and so on and so forth there is a lot lot of overlap there is a lot of miscommunication so to avoid that to remedy that the government has introduced this scheme and in fact our prime minister has urged the states as well as private companies to uh, be there on the portal to take the help of this gati shakti portal to plan infrastructure projects and develop social economic zones moving on now these are very small points that you must know about the schemes try to pen them down in very short uh, uh, answer sorry 
try to pen them down in very short points because these are going these are important for you because see you might you don't know you might also can be asked a prelims objective based question uh, or a statement based question in prelims related to the scheme so just be very focused on these features the first feature is national master plan so this is a huge plan uh, of pm gati shakti national master plan is a program for integrated planning and coordinated implementation or infrastructure connectivity projects now there are two important words here integrated planning and coordinated implementation very essential as i said that there is still a lot of miscommunication a lot of confusion and overlap not just between the ministries but also between various states so because of this the projects the infrastructure projects they suffer and that is why this schemes bring together two important things that is integrated planning that is there will be integrated planning everybody will know what kind of projects are going on in different states and thus can plan accordingly in coordination and then coordinated implementation see you might have heard about situations where or you might have in yourself seen in your areas that there is one ministry or there is one department that lays down the road abhi aapko road banti hui dikh rahi hai most probably maybe uh, a week or a month or a year down the line when the road is perfectly fine koi problem nahi hai road mein koi gaddhe nahi bane hain still there will be some digging happening because सडनली एक डिपार्टमेंट को याद आता है कि हमें तो यहाँ पे लाइन्स डालनी है हमें तो डेक करके वी नीड टू पुट इन पाइप लाइन्स फॉर द वाटर वी नीड टू पुट इन पाइप लाइन्स फॉर द सीवेज राइट सो द वेरी नेक्स्ट मंथ और वेरी नेक्स्ट ईयर अ परफेक्टली फाइन रोड इज द इन दैट केस दिस इज सी दिस इज द मिस कम्युनिकेशन मिस कोऑर्डिनेशन बिटवीन टू डिपार्टमेंट दैट अब इसका फाइनली वॉट हैपन्स इज पीपल द कॉमन पीपल दे हैव टू सफर बिकॉज अगेन नॉट दैट रोड इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी मेड अगेन फॉर से फॉर नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर्स अब नेक्स्ट इलेक्शन होंगे नई गवर्नमेंट आएगी या आना चाहेगी तो दे विल बी डूइंग वर्क फॉर द रोड तब तक के लिए यू विल हैव टू लिव विद द डग अप रोड यू विल हैव टू लिव इन गड्ढाज एंड मड एंड वॉट नॉट राइट सो दिस इज द Uh, the lack of coordination between two departments this is what the government is going to remedy with this gati shakti portal and also uh, coordinated implementation so if anything they are going to implement various projects in coordination in tandem so that there is proper communication what is the final result or the final result out of the implementation of those projects will be least for long term and will be beneficial for the people it marks a paradigm shift in decision making to break the silos of departmentalism now currently the infrastructural projects they face quite a lot many challenges and one of those challenges is red tapeism uh, a lot of uh, interference by the bureaucracy so on and so forth so these challenges they also can be remedied by this portal or this program it would incorporate the infrastructure schemes of various ministries and state governments as i already mentioned this that it is going to the portal itself is going to incorporate a lot many schemes or probably the, all the schemes of various ministries and various case states together where they can cross check ke kis tarah ki is tarah ki scheme dusre state mein to nahi chal rahi ya agar udhar chal rahi hai to what we can learn out of it or if the state is for example if there are two states right they these are the two states this is the common border between the two states now if this state say state a is planning to make a road on uh connecting this state with this state right so at least they will be on the same page in regards to planning a road connecting these two states or even if it is just on the border of one state the other state can also you know join in and can a make, can make a, a long a better road connecting the two states so this is how the two states ministries departments they are going to work in tandem and work coordinate in in a coordinated manner 
it would leverage technology extensively including spatial planning tools with isro now they will include the usage of technology including the spatial planning tools including the uh, the satellites that are there the satellite imaging uh, so on and so forth so they are going to use technology to a large extent to make the whole process of coordination and integration better a portal would be set up under the program to bring 16 ministries together now as many as 16 ministries are coming together so you can imagine the extent of this program 16 ministries together for integrated planning and implementation on of infrastructure connectivity projects it would enable all ministries and departments to visualize review monitor now please focus on these words see there are certain words jo directly schemes ya government uh, papers se liye jate hain which are essential for you to be included in your answers if at all you get a question related to this so what are these words visualize review and monitor the core sectoral programs through the gis platform moving on focus on multimodal logistics parks and second is hub and spoke model so these two things are very essential whenever you are going to talk about development in infrastructure these two points that is multimodal logistic parks and hub and spoke model are going to be very essential for you see you can learn about these things in your core economic uh, uh, chapters of infrastructure so i am not going to get in too much into the details of this but just a journalistic idea of this what is this multimodal logistic parks multimodal is basically uh, where multiple modes are used modes of transportation are used to make a good proper connection between various areas various regions so currently if you see agar koi cargo hota hai if you send your for example you have uh, place an order online for uh, say a shirt right so that shirt amazon will for example amazon will show that it will reach you in 3 to 4 days 3 to 4 working days now 3 to 4 working days mein ab wo shirt if it's made in kochi and you are here in delhi then how is it going to reach you in 3 to 4 days that is where the multimodal logistics they come to some extent the shirt for example from point a to point b that is from factory to uh, the the warehouse of amazon a truck will be used right so a truck is taking the shirts from factory to the amazon warehouse from here from this amazon warehouse till airport again another truck is going to be used then from here airport from this airport till say delhi airplane is going to be used then from delhi to uh, from that warehouse in delhi to your house another since you are uh, you know that all these uh, amazon delivery guys they work on their bikes so a bike might be used right so this is how multiple modes they come together modes of transportation they come together to bring you your things truck plane bike so on and so forth in fact you can also include railways in this because railway is it carries a lot of cargo and that is a huge uh, part that railway plays in the uh, development of the country so this is basically the multimodal uh, uh, model of development and then there is this hub and spoke model so hub hub and spoke model is basically like this this is the diagram very briefly i'll tell you see it can uh, there is one hub from where uh, various deliveries for example this uh, amazon warehouse is the hub and from here various deliveries are made by the delivery agents so they pick your uh, uh, your uh, shirts or your anything that you have ordered they pick it from there and then deliver it to your house so this can be either going out or 
इट कैन बी समथिंग विच इज कमिंग इन लाइक इन सिचुएशन लाइक हियर द वेयर हाउस ऑफ एमेजॉन फ्रॉम द फैक्ट्री फ्रॉम वेरियस फैक्ट्रीज मल्टीपल थिंग्स मल्टीपल प्रोडक्ट्स आर कमिंग इन राइट सो दिस इज वॉट दिस इज द हब एंड दीज आर द स्पोक्स फ्रॉम वन पर्टिकुलर प्लेस मल्टीपल मल्टीपल थिंग्स आर सेंट आउट सो दीज यू जस्ट रीड अबाउट दिस इन योर यू विल गेट टू रीड अबाउट दिस इन योर इकोनॉमी now move so these two things are very essential you see how these through the hub and spoke model and the uh, the multi modal uh, parks they tend to bring a cohesiveness in the overall transportation industry in the overall logistic industry right so this is how they are very essential they reduced to, the they reduce the cost of transportation they reduce the time of transportation to a large extent thus giving quite a lot of boost to the economy moving on key services now it provides this multimodal project uh, parks they provide key services like advanced storage infrastructure last mile connectivity value added services like customer clearances so on and so forth so these mod multimodal parks they are very essential do read about these multimodal parks because they have been in news lately uh, separately also and they are very important part currently of the infrastructure currently of the economy so do read about them in detail so overall they are very essential 400 data layers available on the portal give information on the existing and proposed infrastructure projects and also on forest land and available industrial area estate now what is another important area where our infrastructure projects they get stuck that is land acquisition a land acquisition you might have heard about farmers protesting because of land acquisition uh, or forced land acquisition or farmers protesting or people protesting that they are not getting enough uh, money for the land that is that the government is acquiring for say a particular project a developmental project so land acquisition becomes a very bitter spot in the overall story of infrastructure development of a country this is again another thing that our uh, this uh, pm gati shakti portal or pm gati shakti program is going to remedy moving on these are the six pillars that you must know it's not something that you have to learn but you must know see these are various words these are various terms that you can include in your answer writing to enhance your answer if you write an answer without these terms you will obviously if you are writing correct answer you will get marks but if you include these terms since they are given in the very government paper obviously it is going to provide you uh, an edge over other students it is going to provide you plus marks uh as compared to other students so what are the six pillars first is comprehensiveness activities of every department would be visible so comprehensiveness aa jayegi it will become highly comprehensive instead of being distributed in various areas then second is optimization national master plan to assist ministers so obviously all these things will gradually optimize the efforts of every ministry or every state right if everything is going to become comprehensive understandable you know well coordinated then obviously optimization will be uh, a part of it synchronization up when the things when developmental activities are happening and every uh, other ministry knows about a, uh, every project that other ministry is taking up then in in that case obviously there will be a high level of synchronization things will or projects will go in tandem with each other to get the best possible outcome fourth prioritization cross sectoral interactions are enabled so there might be areas or there might be times when one uh, project when since all the projects are out there in open with Uh, and they they are known to all the ministries and everybody included in uh, infrastructure development of the country in that case people will sometimes you have to prioritize things so people will know which project needs to be prioritized and which can be put on a back burner so prioritization then 
analytics plan to provide all data in one place obviously analytics may as they have said that they will be providing or they will be utilizing a lot of technology under this uh, program then obviously a lot of data will be provided to all the people and everything will be there in one place sixth is dynamic gis platform for ministries and departments it will be very dynamic see you need to use these words you you need to use these keywords in your answer writing to get better marks like this is not something which is highly essential but it provides you an edge over other students moving on let's look at this uh, th these are very specific features of this program you might get some statement see these are these might not be as important for the mains answer writing however they provide you the fodder for answers but these are very essential for your prelims uh, uh, statement based questions right you might get statement based questions related to gati shakti and they can put in uh, these features or these basic details about the uh, portal or the program so what is the first thing driven by seven engines road railways airports ports mass transport waterways and logistic infrastructure so these are the various these are the seven engines through which this overall plan is going to work then national master plan aimed at world class modern infrastructure and logistic synergy the second feature is world class under this master plan it aims at world class logistics and infrastructure thirdly formulation of master plan for express ways completing 2500 uh, sorry 25000 kilometers national highways in 2223 ab this a, now as i said that for the last mile connectivity uh, for all those delivery people who bring your uh, products to your home from the warehouses for those people you need proper highways for connecting these warehouses with the factories you need highways you need roads roads because that last mile connectivity cannot be provided by the airlines right so uske liye you need roads roads ke liye you need highways national highways will be created as many uh, as much as 25000 km national highways is to be extended then unified logistics interface platform allowing data exchange among all mode operators so data will be available under this portal a lot of data will be available you can utilize the data that you require for your own purpose open source mobility stack for seamless travel of passengers four multimodal logistic parks through ppp to be awarded in 2022-23 like current year uh, they are going to be provided integration of postal railways network facilitating parcel movement one station one product one nation one vote one nation one fertilizer so on and so forth. these schemes like one nation one something are they have you know uh, recently been in uh, 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 you know the top priority for our current government because they want to kind of unify the whole country uh, i think then extended coverage under kavach 400 new generation vande bharat trains now please do read about this vande bharat trains this is one thing this is an, another question that can be a possible question for your prelims multimodal connectivity between mass urban transport and railway stations so between the railway stations and uh, mass transport national ropeways development plan as sustainable alternative to conventional roads and capacity building for infrastructure projects so these are the various uh, specific features of this project hope you uh, learned uh, quite a lot new things in this now let's discuss the benefits of pm gati shakti see whenever we talk about a scheme or a project or a, a program of the government upsc is not especially in case of mains they are not going to ask you what is pm gati shakti because they presume that being a upsc student you would know what is this pro project what is this program what is the portal related to 
but the main thing or the main areas they are concerned about or they test your skills on is the benefits related to it or the challenges to it right these are the analytical areas that they test uh, in upsc mains examination and that is why this arena becomes essential for you to focus on now the very first benefit is interdepartmental coordination lack of interdepartmental coordination leads to wasteful expenditure delayed projects unprecedented focus and the plan would enable projects to be executed with a common vision instead of designing and planning in silos now see uh in terms of infrastructural projects lately you might have heard quite a lot about uh, uh, the, these projects being uh, delayed uh, in fact few years back the economic survey also talked about how these projects the delays in these projects is uh, is a major bottleneck uh, for the growth of economy right it is a major challenge for the growth of economy if these projects are delayed be it for any reason be it the land acquisition be it the uh, the sanction of amounts so on and so forth if the project is delayed then it becomes more costlier it becomes highly costlier with time project becomes costlier for the government and thus the returns may diminish right so in this case infrastructural projects are very essential to be delivered in time any delay is going to have a high cost any delay is going to come with a proper cost right so that is why this gati shakti it uh, aims at proper interdepartmental coordination because the delays they are caused because of the lack of coordination between various departments various ministries right so it primarily focuses on coordination between departments and ministries the second one is increase in efficiency it would minimize the disruption and expedite competition uh, sorry completion of works with cost efficiencies and create next generation infrastructure once a project is highly coordinated once a project is well synchronized then obviously the efficiency of the project is also going to take off thirdly reduction in logistics cost the plan would help reducing the logistics cost presently logistics cost in india stands at 13 to 14% of gdp see the uh, plan focuses on development of infrastructure on and it fo it uh, uh, focuses uh, primarily on various multimodal parks uh, uh, logistics parks it focuses on hub and spoke model so there are various things there are various arenas in which the plan tries to increase the efficiency of the transportation communication of the overall infrastructure of the country in fact building of new highways is also one of the important features of this now currently the logistics cost in india is very high it's as high as 13 to 14% of gdp right so we need to reduce this logistics cost the moment this logistics cost is reduced it will automatically give boost to the economy it will obviously the 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 expenditure that is saved will be added on in the profits so it reduces the logistics cost then the unified logistic interface platform would integrate 24 digital systems of six ministries and help in reducing the logistics cost in the country so this is one of the ways through which they are trying to or they intend to reduce the logistics cost now moving on to the next uh fourth is investment opportunities pm gati shakti would provide public and business community information regarding the upcoming connectivity projects other business hub industrial areas and surrounding environment so when everybody knows that for example if a business developer or a person who is into concrete business right he knows that okay in some time or probably in a month or two 
a new road is going to be built from this state or in this state then or, or uh, probably uh, near his or her uh, place so in that case that person will try to grab the opportunity will try to invest in the opportunity right so when there is a lot of openness regarding the upcoming projects the ongoing projects so on and so forth there is an a, a, an advantage for the whole community there and obviously one of them is investment opportunities then this will enable investors to plan their businesses at the suitable locations leading to enhanced synergies of again what we were talking about see if a, if a concrete manufacturer knows that there is a road going to be built right next to his uh, his uh, area then he will what he will do is he will uh, somehow build a, a plan or a future plan to invest in that then the fifth one is creation of jobs agar locally if locally uh, an infrastructure development is going to start say highway or maybe uh, railways or maybe an airport in that case the local people they get uh, employed they get employment opportunities there Similarly, the plan would create multiple employment opportunities and give a boost to the economy, and that gives also a boost to the local economy of that region. Benefit of exports: it would help in improving the global competitiveness of local products by cutting down the logistics cost and improving supply chains. Now, imagine there is a situation where there is a, a say, a cotton sari. maker right there's a person uh, there, there is a local community who makes lots and lots of cotton sarees and very beautiful cotton sarees but uh since these sarees are highly handmade they are handmade uh and they are made by the local people who do not know much about selling them on amazon selling them uh, you know in other states or in other countries these people once a particular logistic uh, program or a particular infrastructure related program is launched in their region they will also get to know lot many opportunities that are there not just in their own region not just in their own state but in states other than theirs and in countries other than theirs also up till now because of lack of logistics because of lack of roads and various modes of transportation these people were not able to get their uh, products delivered to some other state or other region but now because of development of logistics a better development of logistics or coming up of better logistics and cheaper logistics these people can also uh, you know enjoy the services and can send their products far away and can earn more profit so this is how it is going to impact positively the local communities uh, especially in terms of benefits related to the exports it would also help in ensuring proper linkages for local industry and consumers again if being a consumer i want to wear a sari that is made in kolkata and the uh, the development of infrastructure is such that right now i cannot order it and if i order it then i will have to pay a huge price then there's no point but if gradually government comes up with numerous projects multimodal projects and infrastructure projects that ease this this problem of transportation then gradually the cost will reduce of that uh, the transportation cost the logistic cost will reduce and the overall cost of that sari will reduce and i will be able to wear that sari so this is another benefit then comes multiplier effect multiplier effects accrue to the economy through infrastructure spending the project not only contributes immediately through increase in demand for labor construction material but also through the second order effects brought by improved connectivity so the more uh, people like me order sarees from kolkata the more will the uh, the, uh, the more will be the boost to the economy of that particular region from where the saree is being uh, imported so in that case it is going to have a multiplier effect jahan pe demand badhegi us saree ki wahan par uski production badhegi the more the production the more will be the profits and gradually the economy of that region will grow so this is the multiplier effect 
according to a study the decrease in logistics cost has a multiplier of around 2.5 to 3.5 it means for every rupee spent by the government in creating infrastructure gdp gain gains worth rupees 2.5 or 3.5 are there so government ab kisi region ki agar economy grow kar rahi hai to obviously overall it will have an impact a positive impact on the overall national economy the overall gdp of the country and currently as per the data for every rupee spent by the government jo multiplier effect hota hai what is that multiplier effect for every rupee spent by the government the returns are as many as 2.5 to 3.5 rupees right so this is a lot uh, a lot many gains from just one rupee so i think government has seized this opportunity of investing in the that is why the government has seized this opportunity then comes ease of living and ease of doing business again simple points hain repetitive lag rahe honge but they are separate points and they have their own importance the infrastructure development would enhance ease of living as well as ease of doing business ease of living kaise badhegi when a sari manufacturer in kolkata local sari manufacturer in kolkata when he or she will get more business his or her living standards will also increase because the profit will increase right and because of the ease of living is going to have an impact and also the ease of doing business wo to we have discussed logistics ke ease hote hi how it is it has an impact on the ease of doing business itself urban and industrial centers across india the seamless and efficient movement of goods and people across various modes of transport would enable development of multiple urban industrial centers across india now where these urban industrial centers are very scant in india in 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 our country currently these are going to also grow the next is social sector expenditure the revenues of both center and state government would be bolstered enabling higher spending on social sectors it will have spillover effects of ease pre, uh, easing pressure on existing urban agglomeration leading to higher quality of life so overall quality of life is going to increase because now what happens is not just the people who are included in, in this uh, who are directly affected by this trade uh, by this improvement in infrastructure and logistics but also the people who uh, who are marginalized who require social help from the government are also because since see the government is now going to have more uh, uh, you know money in their coffers they are going to utilize that money for every rupee spent by the government jo multiplier effect hota hai what is that multiplier effect for every rupee spent by the government the returns are as many as 2.5 to 3.5 rupees right so this is a lot uh, a lot many gains from just one rupee so i think government has seized this opportunity of investing in the that is why the government has seized this opportunity then comes ease of living and ease of doing business again simple points hain repetitive lag rahe honge but they are separate points and they have their own importance the infrastructure development would enhance ease of living as well as ease of doing business ease of living kaise badhegi when a sari manufacturer in kolkata local sari manufacturer in kolkata when he or she will get more business his or her living standards will also increase because the profit will increase right and because of the ease of living is going to have an impact and also the ease of doing business wo to we have discussed logistics ke ease hote hi how it is it has an impact on the ease of doing business itself urban and industrial centers across india the seamless and efficient movement of goods and people across various modes of transport would enable development of multiple urban industrial centers across india it is social sector expenditure the revenues of both center and state government would be bolstered enabling higher spending on social sectors it will have spillover effects of ease pre, uh, easing pressure on existing urban 
agglomeration leading to higher quality of life so overall quality of life is going to increase because now what happens is not just the people who are included in, in this uh, who are directly affected by this trade uh, by this improvement in infrastructure and logistics but also the people who uh, who are marginalized who require social help from the government are also because since see the government is now going to have more uh, uh, you know money in their coffers they are going to utilize that money for the social schemes then the people who are getting benefited from these social schemes are going to be further uh, you know they will uh, see a better life they will also see a uh, an ease of living overall so this is how it is going to have an overall impact a very unanimously uh, coordinated overall impact on the country's economy as well as for the individuals of the country now moving on to the challenges in infrastructural development now why do we need a scheme like this what are the challenges in infrastructural development humne we have discussed ke kya kya cheeze they have what are the various features of this program what are the various uh, things that the government is inclu including uh, in this program now we are going to talk about the various challenges in the infrastructural development because as i've already said that in upsc mains examination nobody is going to ask you directly ki what is pm gandhi shakti program is rather they're going to talk about the challenges of the infrastructure development they're going to talk about the benefits of pm gandhi shakti so on and so forth so first challenge is availability of land india's biggest constraint to infrastructure development is the availability of adequate land delays in land acquisition lead to cost overruns dismay dismayed from investing in any such infrastructure programs or uh, plans of the government or projects of the government because they know ke there is a lot of delay in land acquisition there is there are multiple uh, problems related to land acquisition they just don't want to get into that uski wajah se there is delay delays ki wajah se the overall co cost of the project it increases so that is why the private sector has always you know has been very skeptical in investing in such infrastructure programs of the government but now i hope that with pm gadi shakti all these things are going to be remedied the cumbersome land acquisition process continues to add to the cost of already heightened expenses of infrastructure uh development lack of proper dispute mechanism also adds to the delays now there is also a lack of proper dispute mechanism you already know whenever you read about the courts and the uh, you know the already numerous lakhs and lakhs of cases that are currently going on in the courts and how there is a lot of delay in justice because of these backlogs now another addition is coming from uh, the infrastructure related projects that again it, there is no one specific mechanism proper dispute redressal mechanism for infrastructure related projects they also get accumulated in the uh, in the judiciary is the already existing uh, lakhs of lakhs of files and cases and then there is again further delay in the project then regulatory framework most of the infrastructure projects in india suffer from delays in completion it is mainly due to an adequate regulatory framework and inefficiency in the approval of the process now there is also a lack in form of lack of regulatory framework there is no regulatory framework right now uh, that can tackle this situation moving on delay in clearances and implementation the delay in implementation of project leads to time and cost overrun again the delays in uh, loan clearances and uh, you know overall bill clearances and implementation it it leads to higher cost of the project resilient infrastructure the infrastructure development should consider current realities like climate change natural as well as man made disasters climate change is upon us all projects must incorporate adaptation and mitigation strategies so currently the we don't have to just focus on development rather the situation is such currently that we need to keep in mind constantly keep in mind about the uh, environment 
so whenever there is an infrastructure project going on you need to be very careful in terms of what impact it's going to have on the environment the surrounding environment right so one needs to be very careful in that regards there is infra re resilient infrastructure is not there so infrastructure might be created might be uh, the projects are completed but again some man made disaster happens or some natural disaster like typhoons they can come and can destroy the infrastructure projects and this happens very free this has happened uh, lately happens very frequently uh, so that is why we need to make infrastructures that are more resilient gap between electricity production and demand it affects both manufacturing and overall growth so also there is a lag between there is a gap between electricity demand and production that impacts the infrastructure projects concerns related to transport sector while road transport is backbone of indian transport infrastructure it is inadequate in terms of quality quantity and connectivity no doubt we have long 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 highway uh, project we have uh, uh, thousands and uh, lakhs of uh, kilometers long road but still there is a lot of lag there is a lot of uh, issues with quality quantity as well as connectivity of the roads civil aviation and ports are in urgent need of modernization modernization hi nahi hua hai ports hai they are there civil aviation is there but there is no such modernization although public sector would continue to play an important role in building transport infrastructure the resource needed are much more than what the public sector can provide right so currently what the public sector can provide the resources what these projects they need they are way too much right like a loan public sector cannot take over such projects we need to get into uh, either a, a private mode or a ppp mode moving on infrastructure financing remains an underdeveloped sector in india even today infrastructure financing is a challenged sector in india there is you know there are not many infrastructure financers even the private sector as you know because of the delays they take a back seat in regards to financing and infrastructure special attention is required for financing needs private sector investment in infrastructure also there is unequivocal link between problems of attracting private investment in infrastructure and price fixation of infrastructure services so these are the various challenges that this currently the infrastructure is facing uh, or infrastructure development is facing in india now what can be done firstly synchronization at various levels as this pm gadi shakti itself is talking about synchronization and coordination yes we need to talk about more synchronization in these in various projects in various ministries between various states and departments then secondly policy frameworks the implementation maintenance and policy framework for new assets should be done in such a manner that it does not remain only a preserve of private sector they were encouraging competition which would bring natural benefits like better price discovery services and other benefits for the consumers and thirdly public private partnership as we have already seen that public sector in itself does not have a lot of money to fund these infrastructure the huge infrastructure projects whereas on the other hand because of the delays and because of the red tapism and numerous other challenges uh, related to these infrastructure development projects the private sector has taken a seat back now what can be done the ppp model is the only way out right i hope this was all helpful to you now you do understand on uh, a better lines how this pm gati shakti is going to be beneficial for the country what are the various infrastructure related problems that the country is facing right now i hope the lecture was helpful to you for more such lectures keep watching analyst is thank you so much stay safe keep studying